Dear ladies, uh, we are going to start in three minutes or so because we are allowing for some participants to come in from the policy focus session. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, I think we will start now with our program. Some of our friends might be still getting in from the policy focus session, but we will still start. Uh, 
Going back to our agenda, we have here an item on, on our agenda called It's About Time for Parity. And we have here discussion that is chaired by Jane Dutman from The Guardian. And if she would please come over here and the speakers as well, the ones that, that are participating in this discussion. And then we'll just do as we usually do. We offer the chair to introduce herself uh, and her group of speakers. The floor is yours. And just to explain, ladies, because we've made some minor changes while you were in your policy sessions, the countries are now up there, and those that are giving statements for their individual countries are asked to be seated there for our later item on the agenda. But please, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and um, uh, welcome to this uh, penultimate session, I guess, of uh, uh, this um, amazing summit. My name is Jane Dudman. I'm a journalist from The Guardian. I've been an editor at The Guardian for 10 years, and it's always an absolute pleasure to come to the Women in Political Leaders Conference and to see so many women discussing so many vital and interesting topics. And this year has been, of course, no exception. And one of the other pleasures, the great pleasure, is that whenever I introduce myself and say I'm Jane Dudman from The Guardian, nearly everybody knows what The Guardian is. And that is also a very great pleasure. So, without further ado, we are going to have this afternoon a, a crisp conversation. We are going to have a conversation about some of the topics that have come up over the past two days. And to join me in that uh, conversation, I have a very distinguished panel who will be able to give us some of their summarizing thoughts. Uh, we have Masume Ebtekar, who is the Vice President in Iran for Women and Family Affairs. Masuma previously headed up the Department for Environment and was, of course, the first female Vice President of Iran and has always championed the causes of women, the cause of women. Yogita uh, Petraskina, I hope I have that right, is the Minister of Education here in Lithuania. Um, and before she was minister, she was um, um, head of the country's Moster Agency, uh, which reviews and monitors uh, science and education. And we were just chatting about the importance of education and, and of technology, and I'm sure that's going to come up. And I'm sure that will also come up with our, our third panelist here this afternoon, uh, Virginia Langbeck from the um, AIGA, from the Inter European Institute of Gender Equality, who's been director of the Institute since 2009. Um, before joining AIGA, Virginia had a long career in both local and central government, many different bodies, with a focus on public sector reform, education, health, and many other areas. And she coincidentally also has, I believe, a master's from here in Vilnius University, is that right? So, a local connection. Um, and we have been talking in the past two days about the progress of women. Obviously, that is what we are all here to talk about. It can sometimes feel glacial. It can sometimes feel two steps forward, one step back. It can be very difficult. But that is why it is so important to have events like this one, where people, uh, where parliamentarians can get together and talk about how to push for progress. As parliamentarians, you yourselves already know very well how to push for progress. But um, I think, and I very much hope, that you will have gained many more ideas and practical ideas, concrete suggestions, over the past two days. So I'm going to start, actually, by asking our panelists, what is the single thing that you have taken away from the conference um, over these past two days. What is the thing that you would hope to take um, away with you? Yogita. First of all, it's a great pleasure and great honor to be a part of this conference. Uh, the moment I opened the door of parliament, I started 
smiling because uh, uh, the vibrancy that we can all fee uh, feel here is already, I think, the driver for progress. Uh, and uh, I, I am a, an optimist. Uh, and uh, what I can see that uh, me myself, uh, being in the area of education, uh, being in the area of uh, academic society, uh, we still have quite a number of stereotypes. And as we have discussed, it is like something that falls into your eye and you cannot see until you move it. So that's why I think that uh, education is a power of change. Because uh, as long as it is based on core values that have been developed in families in different cultural backgrounds, education is a power to set the right scene to remove any obstacles or any areas and drives the change. So that's why I think such conferences is a proof that the progress is going on. So me, myself, uh, I'm very happy to witness this. Thank you, and um, it's also a pleasure for me to uh, attend this very important conference, and I'd like to thank the government of Lithuania for hosting this very important event and all the organizers. Uh, I think that the message that most of us get from these gatherings is that women have a lot to say in today's world, and that it seems that they're usually left out and that leaves a vacuum. And that's the reason why we're engaged in so many conflicts, so many misunderstandings, so many stereotypes. Instead of going for uh, the major objectives that we have in life, uh, betterment, upliftment, advances in health and education in different areas, uh, the world is unfortunately moving towards more mistrust, insecurity, famine, poverty, and uh, you usually see that what's lacking is the compassion factor. And what you see in these gatherings is that women have that compassion, they have that coll collective view that they have to work for change, for betterment of humanity. And you feel that driving force, and that, that is a driving force that can bring about change. And that's something that's necessary, and getting women involved at different levels and what you're doing to get young women involved. We have in Iran now uh, an elite of educated Iranian women. One fourth of Iranian women have academic education and they are getting more and more involved in the different social and political processes of Iran. And so many young girls are involved in politics and involved in uh, voting and taking part in the decision-making processes. But it's interesting, President Rouhani has recently uh, made a decree that 30% uh, of the government decision-making posts, positions, have to be given to women. And we're working for that, and that's really bringing about a change. We now have 12 women deputy ministers and uh, so many director generals recently appointed. and. Uh, it's, it signifies the role that women can play in bringing about a change in both uh, the political atmosphere but also in social and economic dimensions. And I think for that reason, uh, this gathering has an important role today in today's world, not only in the national level but at the international and global level as well. Thank you. Virginia, what are you going to take away? First of all, I must say I'm not a politician, so that means that what the perception usually we all take and the people in, in, in our agency is that we try to see how with our work we can help making good politics. The facts, the, the challenges, and usually when we meet politicians or women who really are becoming role models, what they tell is that about the first uncertainty, 
that do I do right, whom I ask, uh, insufficient self-confidence. And to conquer that, this kind of uh, events are extremely important. They add value, not only because we hear, we understand again, we get the confirmation that gender challenges, gender inequality does not have language barrier, geographical barrier, race barrier. We all face the same challenges. And for, in my view, this the VPL, it's one of the best instruments we have. Really, I've been following. I have never been to the events. Now it's the first, but I've been following. And the very good side is more that every time it brings new challenges. Like we now just been discussing digitalization, I'm taking. So, which means that the different women from different countries, from different parts of the world, can agree and you bring back the arguments from here, you establish so you can already be prepared to answer the challenges which might come in three to five years. So it is very, very good model really of where we can agree, where we can strengthen each other. Virginia, thank you very much indeed. And now you mentioned challenges, and obviously there are always challenges. Uh, what are the, the main challenges? What, what is your main challenge, Yogita, in, your, in, 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 in your, your in job here for in, in achieving gender equality? Looking at the facts that we have uh, in education, because I believe this is where many things start, uh, we can see that... Uh, and as, as an example, that when we look at the achievements of school children, we see that uh, in our country, girls are succeeding much better at school. Girls are much more active in choosing their pathway for higher education. Women are much more represented in choosing academic careers, but... We still have uh, the fact that only 33% 30, uh, of women in higher academic positions are there. We also have a fact that though boys are less successful in science, in mathematics, there are twice more boys that choose uh, academic pathways related to engineering and science. And as we live uh, in a uh, fast-changing world, we are talking about uh, technological revolutions, industrial revolutions. I think that they are going hand in hand with social revolutions. Because the way society changes, the texture of the uh, social fabric that is changing. That's why I believe the role of girls, the role of women is key there. I think that there is a lot of potential that is not being unlocked. That's why we have to rethink how do we, starting from teach girls, how do we empower all the soft and transversal competences that these days are becoming much more important than just knowledge and certain skills. And I fully agree that such competences as creativity, as empathy, are key in, in, a process, in, in creating a successful society. And these soft competences are where women power lies there. And that's why I think the way we make decisions at home, at school, at the parliament, it has to change. Thank you very much. Amasime, what do you see as the main it's challenge? Just you're continuing on the line of uh, our colleague. Uh, it's really important that when you talk about politics, you also include uh, compassion in the decision-making processes because more and more um, 
the mentality is that when women come into politics, they have to put compassion aside because it's a sign of weakness. But if you think as compassion as the anima and how the anima is important in motivation, in promoting change for the better, uh, in uh, bringing about dialogue and understanding among societies. So I think that this is an important challenge that we have today at politics at different level. In Iran, uh, an important issue that we have is uh, education, but women are advancing in education uh, at all levels, the universities. Women have uh, outnumbered men, except for engineering. And 55% of our students are women now. But we're now looking to the importance of life skills. And we think that alongside the formal education system, we need life skills, which are very, very instrumental for uh, better livelihoods for women and men. And life skills like uh, education on uh, legal literacy, on uh, dialogue skills, uh, communication skills, uh, skills on how to deal with the different issues that come up in life. Uh, for example, uh, national dialogue on the family is what we're doing to uh, strengthen our families and particularly issues like family prosperity, which is very important for our society and I think for any society as a cornerstone of human development the family should never be overlooked. So uh, these, are, these are some of the issues that we're looking into to uh, empower our young generation in terms of the necessary life skills that they need to be uh, good human beings. Virginia. I would find it extremely difficult to say that there's one challenge. It never is one challenge. but. What, from the research we do, what do we see the patterns, the tendency? We see that areas of gender equalities are not improving. We cannot, we do not manage to fight them. And that means also, because of that, they are influencing, they are drawing backwards some of the development. So let's say now, women, the proportion of women in decision making was mentioned, and uh, for the countries outside the European Union, it might be interesting to know that we have a tool which is called Gender Equality Index. And we have, you know, adjusted to measuring almost all aspects of the policy making in the European Union. And politics, women in decision making is the slowest growing. Now it started growing, but it's one of the last results in really in the gap between men and women is extremely big. Now, why is it? I come to, in my eyes, the, one of the main challenges, that stereotypes. Because if women are not allowed, if they are not encouraged and all that, you know, they will not run for the decision. If they are there, they are harassed, they are, you know, uh, discouraged and hate speeches and all that. But what we found out, and this is common to all the women and men here from different countries, is that we talk about this family, Sphere. when you come back from home, from the office, or you know, if you are like the family in the evenings, where you have kids, you have, for example, family members, elderly, you have maybe somebody disabled, you have to also help the kids at school. Who does the work? And you know the answer. But the thing is that it has become worse. In 10 years in the European Union, this as we called unpaid work, has become bigger proportionately on the shoulders of women. And it's one in three European Union men only spend one hour per, per, per day doing this work. Which means that it goes to education, you don't have time to do this, it goes to, let's say, how you pick the, 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 the segregation in what is the condition for women to study this and that. That destroys everything. So we have very much to do, but gendered perception of women's roles is still the most, the most difficult barrier. 
Virginia, thank you very much. Um, I wish we could have longer to discuss all of these things. Unfortunately, we are running rapidly out of time. Just one last question to each of you, which is we've spoken very much about um, the importance of having young women as a part of, of, of the movement. We've, we've had inspirational young women with us for the, for the past two days. What would you say to your younger self? What would you say, each of you, to your younger self? To, I mean, you probably don't need to say anything, but if you were going to say one thing, what would you say? I think uh, we, though our brain and our heart physically are very close, uh, sometimes I think that the, this is one of the biggest uh, distances that, uh, that we have in human body. So if you want uh, a change, you have to do something that you have never done before. And Thank you. That is actually a perfect note on which to finish. Actually, I'm going to I think probably I'm getting kind of, yes, I think I have to actually finish there, but that was a wonderful thing. So do something that you've never done before. Thank you very much to all of my panellists and thank you very much to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks to the great speakers and the chair for doing this wonderfully and keeping the time frame. I've moved from one side to the other because now I'm going to, we're going to move into the final item on the agenda, which is the statements by national delegations. And I, to begin with, have to be the, the impolite person here because I will have to tell you in advance that there are only two minutes for each delegation or representative of a delegation. Uh, this is for us to be able to keep our time frame and also for us to be able to join in the farewell reception. So I kindly ask you to stick to that, uh, simply because also we have it here on the computer and they will actually pluck, or we will, we will take responsibility of that. We will take out the microphone if it takes longer than two minutes. So uh, I, I will take that on my, on my back. But I, I want it also in the end, uh, it's my role to finalize with some closing remarks. Uh, so dear participants, ladies and gentlemen, dear women political leaders, you are all women political leaders and dear friends, I leave this summit feeling healthier and wealthier than when I came, was something that one of our great speakers said this morning. And for me, these kind words summarize in a great way what this event is all about. We want you to experience that, and if that is your feeling, then we have succeeded. So thank you. Because as you know, Women Political Leaders Global Forum has one and only one mission, dear friends, and that is to increase the number and influence of women in political leadership. Everything we do, whether it's an event like this one, Every research we make, and we make several, or campaigns we launch, they are all dire directed into this one direction of making sure women are heard in politics and increasing their influence and increasing their numbers. And this is super important for so many reasons, not only because it's the right thing to do and it's a good thing to do, but also because it increases the advances of society, it makes societies better. better. It increases the well-being, the economic prosperity, and even, and these are figures to support this, it even increases happiness in societies. And the joke among men, for example, where I come from, where you can find few men that would not talk for gender equality, but if one does, his friends would say, okay, you're not willing to fight for gender equality for your daughters or for the women of Iceland, do it for yourself. Because figures show that where gender equality is high, men live longer. So when you get into debate at home about them not willing to fight this important cause, tell them that it will add extra years to their lives. So there is a lot to gain, not only from gender equality, but also from increasing the number and influence of women in political leadership. Because, dear friends, and that is, this is something we re need to remind us of, we are not there yet. And we still sadly have a long way to go. 
World Economic Forum tells us that there are still 100 years until we reach parity in political participation. And just leaving you with these numbers, women still are only 26% in parliaments. In governments, they are only 19%. 7% of heads of states are women, and under 6% heads of government. So when there is a discussion on this not being important, these are the figures and these are the facts. So as we have said here in the past two, two, two days, it's about time. And there are hundred reasons to act. So dear leaders, as we move, uh, political leaders, as we move forward to the final item on the agenda, I would like to do several things. I would most obviously like to thank, use this opportunity on behalf of WPL to thank the Lithuanian parliament. The speaker of the Seimas, which has kindly lent me his chair for the past two days. Uh, we want to thank them for their kindness, for their enthusiasm, and for their real great ambitions in making this event happen and making this such a great success. You have all been witnessing how how much effort has been put into this, how kind and thoughtful their staff is, and how everybody has been doing great things in order for this to happen. So again, from WPL, our sincere thanks for the cooperation and the willingness of the Lithuanians here in the parliament, in the same as for making this happen. I would really love for you to give them a great round of applause. I would also, dear friends, like to thank again Her Excellency the President of Lithuania for her big role in making this happen and for all her courage when, it's com when it comes to women leadership and how frankly she speaks about the challenges that faces women in political situations such as hers. And, and again, I would also like to thank her because I did that yesterday. I thanked her for the kind weather and for the great weather. And again, we have that. So all my best again to the president of Lithuania and to the people of Lithuania. It's been a one, they've been a wonderful host. And we, I'm sure that we have great memories to share when we come back to our home countries. I would also like to thank our great speakers. I'm sure you've enjoyed listening to their stories, experience, and them sharing with us how their life in politics has been. We've had high-level, enormously great speakers, both here in the plenary, but also in our policy sessions, and I'm sure you have learned a lot from them. And an extra thanks goes to Girls to Leader, I'm sure I was not the only one with tears in my eyes listening to them this morning, because if there's anything we as women in politics can do and want to do, that is to give back. And if some of these young leaders that were here this morning will enter politics at a later stage, maybe we had something to do with that. So again, thanks for that. But most importantly, we at WPL would like to thank you for arriving to the summit, for again and again making these events memorable, making them high spirit, and giving women the opportunity to share their belonging in politics. When I first came to an event uh, organized by WPL, I said to a friend of mine, this is really the first time I feel as if I belong in politics. But I was still active then in politics and was active, active for 20 years. Because I was used to being the only woman and being told that it was strange for me to say that it felt strange. But this was the first sort of crowd where it didn't feel strange and it wasn't strange to say that challenges for women in politics are totally different from the challenges a man faces. So this is what we want to do at WPL, that is to make sure that you feel that way because we talk again and again about the importance of making sure that women enter politics. I'm all for that. We desperately need them to enter. But we also desperately need them to stay. Because figures show that women stay way shorter period than men. They leave way earlier. So one of the challenges is also to make sure that you, that are already active in politics, don't leave them, but stay there. And women political leaders, this is our goal, to make sure that you feel 
safe here, that you feel comfortable, that you feel empowered, and that you go home to your individual parliament and countries and spread the word and feel empowered to do greater things in politics. So that's what we hope to do for you. So, dear friends, finally, I want to use this opportunity to thank our amazing team on WPL. We, have, have, we are blessed with a great crowd of women and men that share our dream and do everything they can to make sure that they serve you and make sure that you feel at home when you're here. And I would also love for you to give them a great round of applause. Rick and his people are all around here. They've been doing an amazing job, so give them a... Thank you so much. And finally, to my friend and Wonder Woman. She is a total Wonder Woman. She will now shake her head because she feels that I am constantly saying this. Nothing that has been happening here for the past days and nothing that has been happening when it comes to Women Political Leader Global Forum would have happened if she would not have decided to chase her dream and to allow us, women in politics, to benefit from her willpower, courage, and the dream to make sure that women feel at home in politics. So, huge thanks, Ivana. And for me, thanks for bearing with me up there for the two days. And I will kindly turn you off. I didn't turn myself off, as you noticed. I should have gotten only two minutes. Uh, but we now enter the, uh, the statements from our delegation. It will be chaired by the man that uh, is usually in this seat. Uh, so it's two minutes per country. Uh, looking forward to listening to it, but also looking forward to the farewell reception. Hope you have a safe journey home. We'll see you in Reykjavik in November and then in Japan next year. Thank you. Hello to everyone once again. And uh, we have to save the time, and uh, I would like to uh, to announce the first country, first country is uh, United Kingdom. Uh, Mr. Speaker, colleagues, I'd like to thank, uh, as well as everybody else giving thanks, I'd like to thank WPL and Lithuania for hosting this important summit. It's my first visit, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. We've heard about the challenges facing women around our world. The UK has an extensive range of legislation to promote and protect gender equality and eradicate sexual violence. But we know we have a lot more to do. Theresa May, our second female prime minister, has tackled these issues head on, both at home and overseas. She was the architect of our modern slavery law, which aims to eradicate economic slavery and human trafficking, which persist in our modern world. She has made the worldwide provision of 12 years of quality girls' education by the year 2030 the central pillar of UK foreign defence and development policy. We maintain our commitment to spend 0.7% of gross national income on meeting the needs of the world's poorest. We're committed to a foreign policy that consciously and consistently delivers for women and girls, and there are three strategic objectives. Eliminate the barriers that hold back women and girls. Empower girls and women economically, politically, socially, with voice, choice and control. Ensure women and girls are safe and secure from all forms of girls. And yes, of course, it's an ambitious agenda. Yes, of course, it calls for international cooperation. But we in this same building today, well, if we don't act, who will? It is time to act. And I know, looking around this hall, we can. Next two minutes goes to Ukraine. My dear colleagues, dear ladies, my name is Natalia Korolevska and I represent Ukraine. It's a great honor for me to be here with you today as a participant of the Women Political Leaders Summit. It's very important for us, women of Ukraine, to have a voice here today. It's important because there is a war in Ukraine now. 
and the women are among the first victims of the war. It's an honor to represent them here. And it's honorable indeed to be a member of the GLOBE women's community and learn from you about a new opportunity, a global practices, and connect with you here. My participation in the summit is also an opportunity to show how women political leaders from around the globe unite and have found 100 reasons to act together to make the world a better and a safer place. For us women of Ukraine, the war is the main reason today to act and unite in order to build peace in our country. I would like to thank the organizers, the participants of the summit, and Dalia Gibraltar for this event. My colleagues and I fully support the mission of women political leaders. And we believe the world's future is in the women's hands. Thank you for your attention. Let's act. Uganda. Right Honourable Speaker, I bring you greetings from the Speaker of Uganda Parliament. I bring you greetings from the land of sunshine, the source of the mighty river, River Nile. And no wonder there is plenty of sunshine in Lithuania now. Right Honourable Speaker, the issue of gender is a global matter. And first I would like to let you know that African countries have suffered several disasters, disaster of tradition and culture. And because of that, we had to work so hard to change the mindset of the people and even our constitution. I was privileged to be part of the constitutional making uh, process and were able to entrance, to entrench in our constitution methods of dealing with those prejudices. Domestic violence is some of the issue, the laws we have passed. Right, Honorable Speaker, because of time, I would like to say that Uganda has done fairly well in bringing up women to represent um, uh, the women in, in top leadership. Uganda was the first to appoint a woman vice, vice president, but we are happy that today women are represented in parliament 34%, which is above the prescribed 30%. Of course, Rwanda has taken the lead, but I also want to say that AU has prescribed 50% of women representation. My delegation would like to leave the following message. One, we cannot leave this hall unless we come up with a mechanism to monitor and review how individual countries are performed in implementing the various instruments that are signed either through the UN and other agencies. Two, it is important that we should put in place holistic mechanisms in ensuring that law and justice agencies fast track on issues which are gender related. Thank you, time is over. Tunisia. Uh, bonjour tout le monde. Je suis vraiment très fier d'être avec vous. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to be here with you, with the people who, who represent their countries. Booster et rêver, rêver de de belles choses pour son pays. We are here to remember and to dream about the best things in the world. Uh, Tunis is a small country, but it's. Uh, Women are in, an important a part of Tunis. It was always a country of women. Uh, Tunis has been uh, fighting for women. Everyone knows Ulysses. Ulysses comes uh, from um, Tunis, from Venice. And thanks to the imagination of a woman, he has uh, managed to do a lot uh, for people to speak about him. And uh, Tunis is a very small country. It, 
You know the story about the There is a special story which uh, uh, demonstrates how women can solve every problem. Our women are very active and the percentage of women in parliament is high. We uh, are committed to parity and we are successful. We want to ensure both horizontal and uh, vertical parity. This means that we will continue reaching our goals. I firmly believe that women's rights are not fully implemented anywhere and we should act further on. Thank you. Togo. Mr. Speaker, dear participants, I would like to start with thanking the WPL and all of you for two fantastic days. I would like to speak about parity in Parliament and how we work today in the Swedish Parliament. The Swedish Parliament has a relatively high number of female MPs, 44% uh, of the election 2014. And how come? Well, we have a couple of important factors that has promoted these developments, and one is uh, the proportional electoral system, but it's also in combination with political culture-based gender equality. Of crucial importance for the increased representation of women is the fact that most political parties in Sweden have chosen to introduce the objective of achieving an improved gender balance. So many political parties have on their own initiative, not because compulsory law, adopted special measures to get uh, to achieve balanced party lists. But we could not confine ourselves in this relatively high female representation. In my view, gender equality is a lot more than only presence of women in parliament. It depends also on parliament's gender sensitivity, awareness, its policies and infrastructure. So parliament have therefore, our parliament have therefore shifted the, the emphasis from quantity to quality. And uh, since time is running, I will just do some conclusions. And I would like to point out that the most important factor we learned is that work for gender equality has to start in the top of the organization. And let me end by saying, for the sake of democracy, efficiency, gender equality, it's a matter for both men and women. Thank you. Thank you. It was Sweden, not Togo. And now, Sudan. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, and the Women Political Leaders Global Forum, the President, and the Speaker of the Republic of Lithuania, as a CIMAS. And all our parliamentarians and distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is honorable for me to speak for these two minutes to you. I have only a message for all women here that we should enhance and uh, empowerment of women and increase women political leaders. This is the issue for this summit. So we have to face difficulties and challenges and obstacles to overcome them in order to achieve our goals and expectations, especially with the growing influence of women in the decision-making circle. So we hope we can increase the women leaders in our parliament and executive, our government, and in the society for women leadership, political one. Thanks. Thank you. Slovakia. Do we have Slovakia? Serbia. Uh, 
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to extend warm greetings on behalf of the delegation of the Republic of Serbia and Women in Parliamentary Network and Ms. Stefana Milodinovic and Ms. Natasha Mikhailovic, who actively participated in this forum but have to leave earlier. I'll read the statement of Aleksandr Maletic, who is also the member of Serbian delegation and PM Vice President. On behalf of the Parliamentary Assembly of the Mediterranean and National Assembly of Republic of Serbia, I want to thank the women political leaders for their kind invitation. PAM delegates highly value its partnership with women political leaders, and I wish to thank the Parliament of Lithuania for their hospitality. For those who are not familiar with PAM, we are an international organization with the observer status at the United Nations General Assembly. We have 30 member parliaments of the Mediterranean region, and we work to reach the best political, social, economic, and cultural environment and conditions for the fellow citizens of the member states. States. For PAM, the role of women in our society is a top priority. Particularly, we value the role of women in the mass migrations that are taking place in our region. As PAM, we have invested a lot in the role of women who are affected by conflict, especially in terms of education for themselves and their children. Additionally, women play an important role in conflict resolution, and PM is proud to recognize such efforts. As an example, at the last PM plenary session, we awarded a special prize to a group called Women Wage Peace. This is a movement of Israeli, Arab, and Jewish, and Palestinian women for their commitment to promote a non-violent, respectful, and mutually accepted solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. PM is looking forward to establish a more structured cooperation with women political leaders, and in that regard, as we discussed at the last forum by our Secretary General, PM is ready to sign a cooperation agreement between our two organizations to further promote and advance women issues in the Mediterranean region in a structured manner. Thank you. Saudi Arabia. Mr. Speaker, a dear colleague, good afternoon. Uh, we would like to thank Women Political Leader Global Forum for this amazing summit of, and of course the Lithuanian President, Government and Siemens for hosting the, this year. Uh, it was a wonderful, stimulating conference. Thanks again for kindness and wonderful hospitality. Um, as most of you know, our country, Saudi Arabia, has been undergoing major transformation lately uh, taking bold and confident steps toward achieving our country ambitions and named by our young brands uh, vision 2030. Like all of you, our country understands that without women empowerment, independence and gender party, our vision, our dream for vibrant society, purposeful economy and ambitious homeland, which is the axis of our vision 2030, cannot be achieved. What you may not know that our national transition program 2030 has 36, 36 strate uh, strategic objectives supporting women empowerment, independence, and economic self-reliance. In my country, every day, we see new legislations, law decrees supporting these goals for educa from educating women abroad in a fully sponsored ch scholarship to mandating certain sectors employee, employee only Saudi women and increasing women employees in both governmental and private sector. In addition to encouraging female participation in all aspects of public, of public life. Yesterday, Ferris Saudi Women was elected to the membership of CEDAW, and congratulations to Dr. Al Ramah and to Saudi Arabia in this occasion. Thank you. Sao Tome and Principe. Finished? The time is finished? Excellencias, senhoras e senhores, em nome da delegação da Saúde Tomei Príncipe, quisiera agradecer a DPL 
au Parlement, euh, Parlement lituanien. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of my country, I would like to thank the Lithuanian Parliament and the organizers of this event for the invitation to participate in this event. I would like to devote my address to all the leaders, leader women of my country, and all the women leaders in the world who fight for gender equality. Ladies and gentlemen, women are extremely diversified personalities. They can play different roles at the same time. They can be mothers and uh, work in their offices, seek career in the parliament of my country. I have brought together women parliamentarians, and uh, what we are doing now is working at the legislation to fight violence against women. Two to 18 percent of women uh, is what we have in our parliament today. Our goal is 30 in the near future. And I believe that later we'll manage to uh, achieve 50 percent, because if women are not participating in policy uh, on the same terms, no progress will be achieved. This is why we need to invest into education of girls and women. We need to be united, and we are strong when we are working together. It is a long path that we are pursuing, but if we work together, we will manage. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the government of Rwanda, I would like to thank WPL for having organized this summit and special thanks go to Lithuania for its hospitality. I take this opportunity to thank WPL under the great leadership of Silvana for having chosen my country, Rwanda, as a host of WPL Africa office which was launched in April this year. My country reaffirmed its commitment to use this office to continue to advance the social economic transformation of women in the framework of the Agenda 2030. To this end, let me conclude by a quote from the speech of His Excellency Paul Kagame, the President of the Republic of Rwanda, delivered on the occasion of European Development Days in Brussels on 5th June 2018. As a, a he for she global champion, he said, I quote, he for she or she is we, these should not be mere hashtags, but expressions of our determination to make change really happen. Rights and outcomes are only equal when treatment is equal. It is up to leaders at every level to ensure that there is accountability for changing harmful societal norms. The task cannot just be left to individuals to sort out among themselves. End of quote. Thank you. Thank you. Romania. Madam President, Silvana, Mr. Speaker, dear ladies and gentlemen, we leave Vilnius taking with us very interesting ideas and stimulating reflections which have emerged in this room along with a profound sense of responsibility. Listening to all the speakers, it has become obvious that globalization brings about opportunities in many ways, but also many hard challenges. It is a window open to many women around the world, but at 
the same time, not to forget that many other, other are still discriminated. On our effort to alert the space of respected women rights, we will therefore never stop. In our continuous efforts to cope with the inherent challenges of globalization, let's demonstrate together that empowering women is not about gender labels. It is about the transformative impact of our work in our social society in local, uh, regional, and uh, national level. On behalf of Romanian parliamentary delegation attending this outstanding event and uh, of all Romanian women who are not present here, but whom we proudly represent, I would like to expand our deepest appreciation to the WPL for creating the opportunity of getting together in such a distinguished gathering and to debate on such meaningful and visionary subject. The wonderful contacts we made here, the substance of our discussion and the hospitality of our host for, will forever remain in our heart. We live with news taking with us the international heart and international smile of women. Dear ladies, we, can, we want ch to change the world and we can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Republic of Congo. Portugal. Hello. I'd like, first of all, to thank WPL for this excellent event and for bringing women together from all, all over the world. And Lithuania, and with, with this amazing weather. In Portugal, in 44 years of democracy, we've come a long way on gender equality, but we still have a long way to walk. We're working right now on a new law on parity to achieve 40% of women in parliament and in local elections. Also in a law to achieve equal pay and more women in leadership functions in public administrations and big uh, companies. But we must uh, really, really work very hard in Portugal, but all, all, all over the world, to eradicate violence against women, domestic violence, sexual assault, rape. We need equal pay, political, equal political participation and representation. We need women in leadership, but we also need that these, these women are not victims of these extreme forms of violence. And women's struggle, our struggle, must be always an international movement. We have between us a lot of differences, language, nationality, culture, political ideology, but we share the belief that gender equality is a precondition for a more just, free, and peaceful world. Let's work on that with solidarity and in international solidarity. And I'd like to uh, leave a final wor word to women that are always invisible in these events and in political speeches and politics and political measures that are LGBT women, lesbian, bisexual, transsexual women that are often victims of extreme discrimination and violence. Thank you very much. Okay, hello. Poland. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is particularly meaningful that this location should be chosen for the summit this year. Lithuania is celebrating its 100 years of independence, but so is Poland. Poland is also celebrating its 100 years of independence. So I'm particularly grateful to the government of Lithuania and to WPL for having chosen your country. Uh, for us, this has been an education. Uh, Poland has no problem with gender equality. We have 23% of women in our parliament. We do have a problem with pay on the business side, but not on the political side, so we have some way to go. 
But I think it has been about education here, and it also has been a pleasure. We have met so many wonderful women. We have listened to so many amazing stories. We share your views, we share your concerns, and I think it is safe to say that the theme that has chosen for the summit, it's about time, is absolutely appropriate. It is indeed about time. The other thing that I would like to mention is the program, the Girls to Leaders program. I really applaud that. I think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, somebody mentioned the importance of education. That is exactly what it is. Not just promoting these women for politicians, but giving these women, these girls, an opportunity to hear what is going on in other parts of the world, to hear about the problems that other women in other parts of the world choose. This wonderful, wonderful forum, I applaud WPL. You do an amazing job, and I'm already looking forward to your next session and to seeing so many people here that I met at the last one and have become my friends. Thank you very much. Thank you. Philippines. On behalf of the Philippine House of Representatives, represented by a delegation of seven empowered women members of parliament, we wish to thank Her Excellency, the President of Lithuania, the Speaker of the SEMAS, President Silvana, along with all the men and women behind the WPL Forum, and most of all, the beautiful people of Lithuania for the hospitality. The Philippines is a champion of gender equality, and we rank seventh in the Global Gender Gap Index, with the narrowest gender gap in Asia. We pride ourselves as having had two female presidents, one chief justice, one ombudsman, or rather ombudswoman, and now have elected four lady senators and 89 lady legislators, five of them deputy speakers, and I am one of them, in the House of Representatives. We have a proud history of significant political participation from women, and I can say, Indeed, a woman's place is in politics. We appreciate the WPL Global Forum enables us to stay in touch with advocates from all over the world and to be in the mainstream of the exchange of ideas among them. As legislators, we are happy to take home with us new insights and we feel more inspired to continue our work of crafting laws that empower women to the next level. God bless and mabuhay. <laughs> Thank you. Peru. Queridas mujeres del mundo, buenas tardes. Soy Tami, congresista de... Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I come from Peru, from Machu Picchu. And it is an honor for me to take part in this in this meeting. I would like to greet you on that way. Las mujeres en política, los negocios y en otras áreas de la sociedad. Es un hecho. We want to involve women in politics and everywhere. Indeed, we have uh, more space in policy making, but this is not enough. We want to, everyone to acknowledge that there is a need for more women active in politics. The Peruvian Congress is committed to gender equality, but violence against women is still a problem. However, in policy making, we can change a lot. A month ago, 37 women in our parliament urged the speaker to organize a session on women. And we 
spoke about problems such as uh, violence, inequality in terms of pay, and so on. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to take part in this meeting, thanks to the W. PL and to Silvana who knows so well what is to be achieved. Thank you. God bless you. There is no Panama. Pakistan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank from on my own behalf and on the behalf of the Pakistani team who has come with me, Selwana to you and your team, and of course the media as well. You are simply beautiful people. You got a beautiful country and you got beautiful weather. Uh, now, no doubt, according to Pakistan, is a is a patriarchal society, no doubt, structural inequalities are there, but the picture is not that gloomy. Regardless, amidst all the challenges, Pakistan is a democratic and progressive country which is firmly committed to the, to the promotion and protection of women's, uh, women and their real leadership role in all sphere of life, including politics. And I am the living example. I was the first deputy speaker of that primitive society of Pakistan. We hope and pray that our country will continue this upward trajectory towards the gender equal society. I thank you very much. I was so scared of time that I finished it so early. <laughs> Thank you. Norway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, colleagues. I'm so lucky to be born in Norway. There are now 31.4% of women in our parliament. The president of the parliament is a woman. The prime minister is a woman. The minister of finance is a woman. The minister of foreign affairs is a woman. These are talented and brave women. But right now, I want to tell you about somebody else. I want to tell you about a girl named Pippi Longstocking. Pippi was born in 1945. Her mother was a writer called Astrid Lindgren from Sweden. Pippi is the strongest girl in the world. She lives alone, alone in a large house without parents, but she has a horse and a monkey. Pippi has many challenges, but she has a strong voice and a clear philosophy. Listen to her words. Pippi says, I have never done that before, so I'm sure I can. Maybe Norway has a manly female politician at the top because we have stability and because this generation of women has um, grown up with Pippi Longstocking. All girls need strong role models. All girls in the world should know Pippi. Thank you. Thank you. Nigeria. Thank you, Honorable Speaker and distinguished colleagues. I brought you greetings from the House of Representatives of Nigeria. We are glad that Nigeria is one of the invited guests. I'll go straight to the point. The politics of Nigeria has gone away from the issue of you wanting to be as a female. You want to be a politician. Ours is is not served a la carte. 
the powers that be in Nigerian politics has made it so difficult for females to aspire, even though there are a lot of legislations we've put in place that political parties will allow the females to have a free form. But on the day of primary, the violence will always man. It is a trouble. My own was deadly, but at the end of the day, I won. The truth is that every woman, while we are progressing to politics, you will remove anything like being calm or quiet. If you want to be there, that is one. Again, we've done something that is very good in the gender parity. You know, we, we brought the bill in the House because there is drastic reduction in this regime in the female parliamentarians. We reduced to 5%. Why? Because of violence. A lot of women cannot stand the test of the attacks and intimidation. But we are coming up. We did something, and the few of us that managed to get elected, we were doing wonderfully well in our constituencies, and that has endeared a lot of women. As I'm talking to you, we have more than 60-something yeah. women coming up to aspire because of the examples they saw in the constituencies where a few of us, our females, are representing. And it made us proud. Thank you. New Zealand. We have no New Zealand. Myanmar. Dear all, thanking you, to all of you, and all the concerned persons. I'm so short. <laughs> I'm Kinsiju from K K uh, Myanmar, which is very far away from the Europe. I will thank you on behalf of my country, Myanmar, to all, cons all concerned persons, all level of WPL Global Summit 2018 for their hospitality. And thank you to all participants here for giving me a chance to deliver a short, simple, basic, important statement. It is now to share my statement. And that is, our sensitive issues are many, education, in education, economy, um, health, health investment programs and peace process and security, politics and gender sensitive parliament and law making processes. We want to know that in Myanmar there is only one minister, women minister in Myanmar, in the union level, and only two women chief minister among the 14 state and division. So sorry to share it. So we want, that is our, uh, um, to share the statement is that communication and working together with all the global women is very important. So, stream, to streamline our communication and network between our countries and with, between the global women, please, communication is so important that communication... Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Morocco. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear participants, in the name of the Moroccan delegation, I would like to express my warmest greeting to Lithuanians for hosting this special event. Many thanks also to the WPL team. Definitely, 
This event was a big opportunity to exchange best practices. It is also an important platform to discuss problems and topics that can provide us the reliability to export ideas to improve the women's rights in our countries. All over years, Morocco has been engaged in many international agreements for civil and political rights and has worked to eliminate all forms of discriminations against women. In 1963, women had obtained the right to vote. 19, 19, 1997, first woman in the government. 1993, first woman in the parliament. Since the enthronement of His Majesty, the King Mohammed VI, in 1999, Moroccan women have gained independence and achieved full citizenship thanks to feminist movements and thanks to the will and the determination of His Majesty. Our sovereign has given hope to Moroccans because they have shown that justice, education, and human rights will become the fundamental pillars of their rules. In 2009, quotas are put in place in the municipal elections, which leads to around 7,000 women in municipalities. The Constitution of 2011 was a human rights constitution, constitution with distinction. It came up with the new instance of equality. However, despite the laws, obstacles still exist in Morocco, preventing women from reaching decision-making spheres on equal feeding with men. Nothing is loose, we still have time to act. Our challenge today as women of the world is to team up for women's economic and political empowerment. And our challenge today as women of Morocco is to get more support to Morocco for hosting the FIFA's World Cup in 2026. Thank you, we count on you. Thank you. Montenegro. There is no Montenegro. Moldova. Уважаемый спикер Сейма Литвы, уважаемые Ladies and gentlemen, Chair, it is a great pleasure for me to participate in this important event in Vilnius these days. On behalf of the Moldovan delegation, I would like to thank all the participants, all the guests of this parliamentary forum and to cordially thank the organizers for the invitation and for the opportunity to participate in the activity of this forum. At the same time, I would like to thank the Lithuanian colleagues for their hospitality, for their excellent organization of the event, and congratulate them on the centenary of the reestablishment of the state of Lithuania. This is an additional opportunity for us to join forces and to overview our activities in the field of um, gender equality and uh, do what is necessary in our country. Women make a very big impact, both uh, speaking about the welfare of the family and the welfare of society. However, their potential is not fully exploited. Therefore, let me note that in the past few years, the Parliament of Moldova has supported the idea of gender equality. Colleagues, we have heard a lot of beneficial uh, ideas which we are going to bring back home. Let me wish all of you uh, every success in all your activities. Dear ladies, time has come. Let's speak about ourselves as very strong because the source may be forgotten however the opinion always stays thank you Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin was salatu was salam wa la ashraf wa musalin wal alihi wa sahbi ajmain L and uh, Lithuania for hosting and organizing WPL 2018. In the last uh, WPL 2017 in Iceland, I expressed my disappointment over my country for the failure to promote women participation in the parliament after 60 years of independence. Alhamdulillah, 
in the last month of 9th of May, we just make an historical move where a new government come into place. And uh, it's an historic event because for the first time, the country being taken over by a new government. And with that new government, Alhamdulillah was appointed to be the Ministry of Housing and Local Government to show that the new government has stronger political will in putting women, more women in parliament and taking up government position. And with that appointment, I hope that I could exercise and practice and push the government of the day to make sure that we promote women empowerment, participation, women uh, gender sensitization, and also gender mainstreaming. So being in a mainstream ministry, I hope that I will give opportunities for more women to take up position in the government, even though it means it's like looking for a needle in the haystack. I'm sure you ladies believe together strongly with me that if you find the trouble to look for these women, we can find them out there, right? So dear friends, I also wish that uh, in my new ministry, like what all you all have heard, when you appoint a woman, you move the nation. Just like in my ministry, I'm not going to only aspire to construct homes, I will aspire to also construct nation. Thank you very much. Time for action. Thank you. Malawi. Right Honourable Speaker, distinguished delegates, on behalf of my delegation, I would like to extend my gratitude to the WPL for organizing this event. My sincere gratitude also goes to Her Excellency the President of Ruthenia for hosting this important function. Malawi will be going into elections next year. Our involvement in such um, summits help us to learn a lot in other countries' efforts that are making to increase the number of women, both in political and non-political decision-making positions. These, experience, these experiences learned we are able to feed to the ongoing massive 50-50 campaign for the equal representation between men and women. As a country, even though our women representation is low, we are still hoping that we'll be there. Through the WPL 2018 summit, we have learned a lot and that it is important to, it is possible for us to achieve the goal. If we invest more in the girl, a girl child, so that as the girls grow, they prepare and take leadership positions in every challenging environment. Let me congratulate the, the president of Malta and the president of WPL, Madame Sivan, for coming up with leader. This movement is very important, and I'm hoping that next time, Malay girls will also join us in, this, in the next summits. As women leaders, we are responsible, especially some of us who are already here, to drive and encourage other women to take up the lead. I do believe that what man can do, women can do better. Together, we can join force and make it. Time is now. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Luxembourg. Last year in Reykjavik, I told you that Luxembourg has voted a law for quotas and that we were very curious to know what this instrument would bring us for the next parliamentarian elections. Now we are in campaign and I can tell you that all the political parties have more than 40% of female candidates on their lists. But now during the campaign, we are facing the next challenge. What are the best arguments for the women to convince the electors to trust us, to give us the face in our work? It is very hard to go on confrontation with men, so we have to work twice as hard as men for our visibility. Yes, we have to be very strong, we have to be self-sufficient, we have to be self-confident, and we have to trust ourselves. But we need the votes from the men and from the women. 
Women should have leader positions in far many more domains than only in politics. That's true. But I don't want to go longer on this subject. I see that time is running. So I would just say something that we got as news a few days ago. Spain's new cabinet has now the highest number of female ministers in country's history, with 11 women taking up places for only six men. So I wish them and all of us to have not only a nice time and an exciting time in government, but to be the best model for all the young people who intend to do their first steps in politics. Thanks for organizing this summit and founders of WePL. Thank you. Lithuania. Dear sisters, you cannot applaud with one hand. You need two to make a sound. You cannot walk on one leg. You need both to stand firmly and to reach your goals. Just like this world needs both men and women to build it, to sustain it, to build our future and to flourish. If one half of the world is discriminated, disrespected, abused, we cannot hope for a bright future. Such a world is jumping on one leg. If we disregard half of the world's talent and potential, we cannot hope for a better world. This is a world which cannot applaud for its success. That's why I want to share my own story. I was a human rights defender all my life. Was I happy with the results? No. Was I sure that I could go to politics? No, I was sure I could not. I could not be a politician. I'm just a non-governmental organization member. I'm just a woman. And then, in one year, I got cancer, I was fired, and I was elected to parliament. And today, I have a much stronger voice. I was able to lead an impeachment commission for our former parliament member, now former, because he harassed women, he disrespected them, he injured their dignity. I was able to finally launch my all life's work with child rights reform with the help of this parliament, and I needed to go to politics. So that's why I completely agree. Women's place is in politics. We are different than men. These differences are beautiful, but we are equal and we both need to be in politics so that both perspectives are reflected and so that this world is going firmly on both legs towards a brighter future. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm so happy to see you. Atru. Libya. Muy buenas tardes, distinguido presidente. Quiero saludar a nombre de la delegación y en particular por este hermoso evento que nos ha reunido aquí en Lutani. Eh, como tenemos muy poco tiempo, quiero decir que en mi país, el año 1982, cuando se conquistó. Good afternoon. We have introduced the quota system, and uh, from 7% of women, now we have 12%. After the law on women's rights was adopted, today we are the second country in the world which has as many as 51% of women in Bolivian assembly. However, the most important thing is that in this assembly today we also have local women who used to be completely forgotten in the past, who could not enjoy any rights, including political rights, of course. So I spoke about representative democracy. In our constitution, they speak about the 
representative, direct and local democracy. And this is namely here in Bolivia, in 36 municipalities, women are participating in the activities in their regions. They were elected in those regions by local people as local sisters. We have been speaking about women empowerment so that they need to have the opportunity to participate in the country's life. Those local women in Bolivia are not very well educated. Kosovo. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, everyone, dear friends. It's been such a pleasure, so thank you to both WPL as well as Lithuania for including the Kosovo Parliament in such an amazing event. It has truly boosted me with so much energy that I will need when I go back in all the struggles that myself and fellow women politicians are facing in Kosovo. Uh, what has been truly empowering, uh, apart from meeting uh, almost every one of you and learning so much, uh, was also the young girls from the Girl to Leader project. And that has also reminded me of what keeps me going. So I would like to share this with you in saying in particular that every single time we feel that we are struggling, every single time that it's so tough, it's so hard to face these difficulties in our countries, both as women, but also as citizens of the countries where we live, we should be reminded of all of those young and little girls that are watching us. That has always kept me going, because I knew that if I give up, they will also give up. I knew that they wanted to have a hero, they wanted to have people that they will look at as role models. So if I give up, it's not just me. It's not just a person, it's not just a politician. It's also an entire generation. It's also an entire country. So please make sure that every single time you're struggling, you're fighting, of all of those young girls, of all of those eyes that are watching you. So make sure that that keeps you going in all that fight for you, for all of those generations, because that means that you will win the fight for your country. Thank you. Thank you. Kenya. The right honorable speaker and uh, distinguished participants, on behalf of the Kenyan delegation, and our beloved country, Kenya, on behalf of all women we represent here and all women politicians from Kenya who are not with us here, we want to express our greatest appreciation to WPL, the government of Luthania, and other partners for inviting us to be with you here and also to come and share political experiences. I want also to thank all of you for having given us a chance to listen from each corner of the world and getting to learn that uh, politics is all the same for all women from all over the world. Uh, from Kenya, the status of women in the Kenyan parliament, which is a house, is at 23%. That is 97 women out of 321 men. We also have three elected women senators out of 47. We also have three elected women governors out of 47. That is 8.5%. And therefore, we still have a great and a long journey to walk. 
and therefore I only want to encourage all women political leaders to really look into how we can encourage each other so that we can uh, fight against gender in inequalities across the world. Finally, we have to look at our cultural attitudes and beliefs which are hindering our women from participating in politics. And also the issues of economic empowerment is still a big hindrance which we need to look into as a team because women faces problems when it comes to financing campaigns. Thank you. <laughs> Kazakhstan. There is no Kazakhstan. Jordan. Bismillah, good evening. My name is Dima Tahboub and I'm a member of the Jordanian parliament. Thank you for Lithuania and the WPL for allowing us the chance to celebrate with Lithuanian women this anniversary. 162 years has passed since the first women's march. And since then, in 1856, we've achieved a lot, but there are a lot of setbacks too, as the gender gap report says that the world needs 100 years to close this gap. So maybe we need to reevaluate our methods and ways and think out of the box and see that we need to emphasize effectiveness, impact rather than numbers. We need to move from discussing gender politics into discussing women's rights as a part of human and citizenship rights. Why do we need more women in politics? Because the NDI study proves that more women in politics means less corruption, more focus on education, health, social security, and peace. It's easy to celebrate when there is peace and prosperity. The difficulty and the challenge is for women to thrive when their countries are struck by disease, deprivation, and death. It is these women who we need to reach out and cooperate with, and because allowing Injustice to continue somewhere is allowing injustice to occur everywhere. In Jordan, we are happy to have moved a lot. We have more women in politics, more educated women. We've passed legislations for the support and emancipation of women. And finally, we need to take this discussion out of closed premises. We need to go out to prove to the disbelieving and the discouraging that the presence of women in politics does make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Israel. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Silvana, and dear colleagues. Um, on behalf of the Israeli delegation, shalom. Women around the world are outside the sphere of influence in central areas, and they're mostly absent from peace policy decision-making. Women did not lead the wars, but they also did not participate in negotiation over peace agreements. They were always the mother, the wife, or the sister, and their fate depended on decision-making by their men. It is time to stop blocking women from entering public debate on security issues. Not only in this our right, it is our duty. Women need to be in key decision-making position, not in order to choose which war to fight, but in order to be leaders and choose methods of conversation and negotiation. We understand that the people who suffer most from war are women and children, and so we will not choose this path of action. We are no longer wives of, mothers of. We are women who stand out on our own merits. Women leaders who make their voices heard. We can bring a different type of thinking to the table. We can use our leadership to promote solidarity, compassion, and understanding of the other. We can bring change, and we will change the global discourse. In behalf of my colleagues Rachel Azaria and Liat Margalit, I want to 
call all my colleagues around the Middle East, from all over the world also, we can learn from each other and achieve the goals that we have set for ourselves and our society. Thank you. Thank you. Ireland. Mr. Speaker, Silvana, distinguished guests and colleagues, my name is Marcella Corcoran Kennedy and I'm here from the Irish Parliament along with my colleague, Deputy Fiona O'Loughlin. In Ireland, we pride ourselves on being a country of 100,000 welcomes. In the Irish language, we say, Cade Mila Falce. Over the past few days, I think that Lithuania, as our excellent hosts, have demonstrated that we have competition for that title. The Irish delegation are delighted to attend here and have agreed that the Women Political Leader Summit has been informative, thought-provoking and It is indeed time for gender parity. We will follow the Girl to Leaders programme with interest. All the young people are truly impressive. The various contributors to the sessions whose diverse and extensive experience have energised us to return to Ireland where we will continue to fight for gender parity at all levels in society. And we will continue to fight for uh, gender quotas in local elections where we already have successfully introduced gender quotas for parliamentary elections. Additionally, we found the policy discussions were extremely interesting and varied. I particularly enjoyed the session on building coalitions and women's caucuses. As Vice Chair of the Irish Parliamentary Women's Caucus formed last year, can I warmly invite you to attend our International Par Congress of Parliamentary Caucuses to be held in Dublin Castle on September 9th and 10th of this year. I know I've spoken to This is a celebration of our women gaining the right to vote 100 years ago. I hope to see many of you there so that we can continue the conversations started here in Vilnius. And as they say in Irish, thank you to you all. Thank you. Iran. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thanks for the government of Lithuania for hosting this very important event. And thank you, Silvana and all the team. This has been an excellent session, and uh, I think that it's an opportunity for women in all of the world to speak out and to indicate the fact that if women are more engaged in politics, they give this opportunity to the Global Forum to listen to their voices, to listen to their compassion, to listen to their objectives of a sublime and lofty livelihoods for all humanity, and I think that this can bring a change about. Um, coming from the Islamic Republic of Iran, as the Vice President, I'm serving my third term as the Vice President of Iran, and I would like to indicate some of the advances that we've had in different fields, in terms of political participation, in practically every election that we've had in the past 40 years, and we've had about one every year, Women have been taking part and they've been the driving force and they are taking part in politics and they have an important role today and we have about 6% of our parliament, 17 women are uh, in the parliament today and very active in different areas. But I would like to also touch upon an important issue and that is the issue of peace and security. Without peace and security, it's very difficult to speak about the advancement of women, about gender parity, it's very important to notice that we have a very important international peace deal and we hope that the nuclear peace deal will be saved and I hope that the international community recognizes the importance of this and that women understand the role that they have to play in promoting peace and dialogue in societies. Thank you very much. Thank you. Indonesia. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I will start by saying on behalf of the Indonesian delegation, I would like to thank uh, the WPL, SEMAS, and the government of Lithuania for hosting this event. This summit is held during the holy month of Ramadan, which Muslims all over the world are fasting. I wish for a blissful and blessed Ramadan to my fellow Muslims. 
Delegate, it's about time, it's timely. Women still will not be able to fully participate in public affairs while their freedom and human rights are neglected by inexistence of peace in their country. Yesterday we've heard inspiring story of Sandra from Congo. Those we shall never turn a blind eye towards our fellow women and girls in Palestine, Rohingya, in any part of the world. We should fight for a just and peaceful world for everybody. History noted that women are effective agents of peace. It is therefore important to change the narrative and involve women in all stages of peace process from prevention to solution to stop violence and conflict. To conclude, I would like to emphasize the importance of investing in girls and women. We political leaders have the privilege to make it happen. Never give up and act now. I thank you. Thank you. Iceland. Mr. Speaker, dear sisters, it's an honor to stand here on behalf of the Icelandic delegation. First, I want to thank all of you who have organized this amazing, amazing summit. And also, I want to thank Lithuania for this great hospitality. Uh, I want to use my two minutes to tell you about what we did uh, in Iceland at the Parliament uh, as a response to the Me Too movement last November. At first, uh, I must tell you that there were several groups of women in Iceland that stood up and told their stories about sexual harassment and assault in their work and their daily life. First, 418 political women published their stories and they were followed by women in films and theatre, women in healthcare, police women, lawyers, uh, business women, women in sport and finally foreign women living in Iceland. Their stories, all the stories, each and every one were shocking. My male colleagues at the parliament responded. They wanted to take an action on what they heard. They organized a one-day barbershop conference for the members of parliament in the parliament that started with three speakers and then we were split into small groups of seven or eight persons to have a discussion about our experience. First, the women and men were separated for 90 minutes. Then the organizers split up the groups and we met women and men again in small groups and had amazingly open and honest conversation about this matter. And it was a very good day. I think we learned a lot and I feel that uh, my working place is a better place afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Hungary. Honourable President, please let me start by thanking WPL and SEIMAS for organising this very interesting and informative conference. In close to 200 countries of the world, there are only 18 female heads of state or prime ministers. This also clearly proves the necessity of our conference. We Hungarians are building a Christian democracy which guarantees the dignity, freedom and security of people, safeguarding the equality of men and women, the traditional family model, our Christian culture, as well as our language and history, thus giving our nation a chance to survive and grow into the 21st First century. Over the past eight years, the Hungarian government has passed a number of family policy measures. The sum of money earmarked within the budget for supporting families has been increased by the government from 960 billion to 1,929 billion Hungarian forints. The government is paying special attention to make sure women don't have to choose between motherhood and a career. Our government has made it possible for parents to return to work when the child 
child reaches one year of age whilst receiving a salary as well as child benefits. Child support is also provided to young people studying in institutions of higher education when they have a child. The government, amongst others, has also introduced the family tax allowance, an allowance for those married for the first time, baby bonds for the newborn, extra holidays for parents, a family home allowance, free meals and books in nursery schools and schools, a job protection plan, the extension of the IVF program, free language exams for young people under the age of 35, the so-called grandma pension for women who have clocked up 40 years entitling them to pension. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a continued successful discussion. Thank you very much. Honorable President, Madame la Présidente du WPL, chers sœurs, leaders politiques. Your Excellency, Chair, Ladies and Gentlemen, Haiti is sending best greetings to all of you. The Minister on Women's Rights and myself, personally, thank you for the invitation to this event. We have learned really a lot of interesting things here. Women, you are leaders. Let's work together, side by th side with men, in creating a better future for all of us. In Haiti, a lot of women experience violence these days. And I would like to use this opportunity and to tell you, convey to you the requirements of those who have experienced violence. I mean, women who have actually Uh, what was raised by United Nations organizations working in Haiti. The sufferings of one woman mean sufferings of all women. Long survive solidarity of women. Mr. Speaker, Executive of WPL, I bring you greetings from the President of the Republic of Ghana and the Speaker of Parliament of Ghana. In Ghana, we are yet to induct the Affirmative Action Bill. However, we have 13% of women out of 275 parliamentarians, and we also have 19% of women in ministerial position, including Minister for Communication, Aviation, Foreign Affairs, Attorney General. And in Ghana, for 10 years or more, we have all our Attorney Generals and the Minister for Justice has been women. The Chief of Staff of the country, as of now, is a woman and the Chief Justices for the past 12 years have all been women. I'm also glad to tell you that in Ghana, even though we don't have the Affirmative Action Bill, we have a lot that other women are doing. And I have a role model here who is a parliamentarian. Her husband died, and she quickly, for the sake of her five daughters, took up the husband's position, and now she's an MP for Shai Osudoku, and that is Honorable Linda Oklu. Linda, shall we see you and we applaud you? She's a widow and a mother of five daughters. For the sake of her children, she decided to be there. And the President of the Republic has also brought up a number of interventions to make sure that gender and economic disparities is closed up to ensure that women 
go to school, and those include free SHS, livelihood empowerment programs to make sure that we are elevated and get involved in decision making. Thank you. Thank you. Georgia. There is no Georgia. Former Yugoslav Republic of Macedonia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear friends, dear colleagues, on behalf of the delegation of the Parliament of the Republic of Macedonia, four of us are here, four MPs. Allow me to greet you, Zdravo, and address you in brief. 15 years ago, Women Parliamentarians Club was established as an informal group regardless of the political affiliation of the female MPs. It was the first club in the region being an example how women can unite and fight, overcoming political, ethnic, and religious boundaries. Thanks to the Women Parliamentarians Club, the Parliament has adopted several laws and mechanisms to advance gender equality, the law on equal opportunities of women and men, etc. Due to the electoral quotas, the progress has been done in the representation of the women in the national parliament and municipal councils. The number of the women MPs significantly increased. In this moment, one third of the MPs are women. However, there is still much to do. There are still hundreds of reasons to act. Uh, let, me, let me say also that Ministry of Finance has introduced gender responsive budgeting in the fiscal strategy for the next two years. And let me finish with one good news. Two months ago, Macedonian Parliament has ratified the Istanbul Convention, Macedonia becoming the 29th state to do so. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for two fantastic days. Thank you. Finland. Mr. Speaker, my name is Tula Haatainen. I'm Deputy Speaker in Finnish Parliament. Thank you for all for arranging this magnificent seminar. First, I wish to congratulate Ireland on the referendum result of legislation of safe abortion. This is an important step toward more equal society and respect for human rights. I hope this paves the way for more comprehensive promotion of women's sexual rights. Women face violence throughout the world. Me Too campaign brought to the surface many hushed up cases of sexual harassment. Women now dare to speak out about sexual violence and can recognize it better in their everyday life. Last December, at my initiative, the Finnish parliament discussed sexual harassment. In 1906, Finnish women were the first in the world to get full political rights, the right to vote and right to stand as candidates. In Finnish parliament, there are now 41.5% uh, women. Still, there is work to be done. It is great to have Eige as one of the arranging parties in this event. I'm particularly happy about the fact that when I was minister, I had the opportunity to lead the EU negotiation process and finally the institute was founded. The world today is threatened by climate change, inequality and multitude of crises. The losers are women and children. We don't want to be bystanders. The role of women in crisis resolution and peace processes deserves more attention. Dear friends, let's keep up the good work together with men, girls and boys. Thank you for attention. Thank you. European Parliament. Estonia. Excellences, 
Ladies, gentlemen, when one woman is a leader, it changes her. When more women are leaders, it changes policies and politics. How true it is. The benefits of promoting women into positions of power are very well known. We have spoken about it in this event and also previous ones. Gender diversity improves reputation, improves performance and widens talent pool. Women leaders in politics are more responsive to public needs and tend to cooperate across party lines. So, why still we have too few female leaders of state or government? Why women hold just 25% of leadership positions? It's not only an individual issue, it's not only a national issue. In the end, it is a global issue. We all have to double our efforts to increase the awareness of the benefits of gender equality. We have to triple our commitment to increase the number of women in position of power. But we can't do it alone. We have to involve men to both in discussion and in actions, because gender equality benefits both. We have to proceed our combined efforts to promote empowerment of women and also inspire women around the globe to take responsibility of leadership. We, the ladies attending this event, but also female leaders everywhere, we have to stick together and support each other, as women in leadership positions are still very, very much alone. This is our duty to girls, our duty to ourselves and our duty to the world. If not us, who else? It is about time. Thank you. Thank you. Ecuador. There is no Ecuador. China. Mr. Speaker, distinguished guests and friends, good afternoon. I congratulate the WPL Summit for a complete success. On behalf of the Chinese Women's Delegation, we sincerely thank the Lithuania and the host for the excellent arrangement and warm hospitality. The meeting was fruitful. Women leaders from all regions of the world gathered here to discuss the current issues related to women's progress and human development. It is inspiring and encouraging. We not only exchanged ideas, but also established bonds here, we reunited with our old friends and met many new friends. As women leaders and agents of social changes, we share a common vision and common responsibility. Chinese women and China, as China, we are willing to join hands with women's organizations and women from all over the world to deepen friendship, strengthen cooperation, promote equality between men and women, and the development of the world. That we can meet again in other parts of the world in the future. And we welcome all the friends to visit China in the future. Last but not least, I sincerely thank the host for the excellent arrangement. Thank you. Bueno, en mi país se dice que siempre es de bien nacido ser agradecido. Así que antes que todo quiero agradecer a Silvana, al estupendo team que ha que el primero que yo tengo eh, en esta materia. First of all, I would like to thank the WPL team for this excellent event. The travel home will be long for me. However, I will come home 
full of new ideas and we will do our best to implement them. Chile is the country that is making process. We have introduced quotas 13% to 22% and we are making amendments to the constitution so that women's rights are more respected and then we have more equality. I am 43 and I have eight children. It was quite a challenge for me to become a parliamentarian. It was really hard to combine my work and home duties. And many people in Chile address me with a question, what we should do to become politicians, therefore we have to serve as role models for others. And the conclusion is that we are all very similar and we have the same objectives. What we are trying to do is to work hard to ensure better parity, however our ways are different. What we need to take into consideration is our culture, our history, the challenges that our countries are facing. However, this is a historical moment because we indeed need to work in solidarity to create a better world and a brighter future for our daughters, for all the women who, wants to, who want to become leaders. Thank you and God bless you. Chad. No, Chad. Central American Parliament. Hola, buenas tardes a todas y a los compañeros también. En, en mi condición de parlamentaria por el Estado del de Salvador en, y, de, y de mi país en el Parlamento Centroamericano, quiero en nombre de esa patria grande de Centroamérica agradecer infinitamente. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a member of the Parliament of Central America. I would like to thank you for this event. And as many have already noted, the conclusion is that what we need to strengthen this organization, Women Political Leaders Organization. I'm participating in this Congress for the second time, and I believe this is an excellent platform to create a political agenda. We need such examples, such events, in order to create our own agenda so that we choose the right ways to cope with the challenges. I believe that the topic of women political leaders is especially significant because it is not always that the gender is taken into account and when there is better balance in policy, policy becomes more balanced. The unity is also of key importance in politics. This is why I believe that all we have already discussed up to this moment have enriched us significantly and we are going to include all these uh, matters into our agenda. Let me wish you successful travel back home. Monsieur le Président, éminente personnalité politique, au nom de... Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, on behalf of the whole delegation that I am chairing, let me thank primarily the President of the Republic of Lithuania, the WPL Forum and the Lithuanian Parliament who have invited all of us to participate in this high-level conference and enriched us a great deal. As you all know, our Republic is facing the issues. Now we are experiencing the civil war, 
and both women and children represent the group that is affected most and it is only thanks to women's courage and resistance that our country has not disappeared from the global map. There are 12 women in our assembly out of 140 and uh, we, we have succeeded in that the law on requiring parity has been adopted. I believe that the institutions, legislative institutions and uh, decision-taking institutions should have the equal number of men and women. Thank you. Cameroon. There is no Cameroon. Bulgaria. No Bulgaria. Bosnia. Dear ladies and gentlemen, really I have <clears throat> problem. I'm tired and thirsty, and my English is not doing so good. <laughs> um, my name is Denka Jambas, and with my colleague Lilia, who is here, she, she is here, and we are representing here the House of People of the Parliament Assembly of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And we are also the only two women out of 15 delegates in the upper house of our parliament. As we have heard, the situation in the world has, be has be uh, becoming worse. There are more war zones, migrants, arms, poverty, and there are no solutions in the horizon. Elections are opportunity for change that we need. In October this year in Bosnia and Herzegovina, we will have parliamentary elections. We are expecting a higher level of represent, uh, representing representation of women and we are fighting for that because there are 100 reasons to choose women in the parliament, but also for executive branches and to have ministers of defense, industry, energy, police. It is about time to give more space for women and to support them at all levels. I still believe that one of the solutions for better position of women is investing in their education. Thank you. Belgium. Thank you, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, first, I would like to thank Silvana, Hanna, and everyone at the WPL Forum for having this lovely event. It was great. Uh, I would also like to thank Lithuania, because this is actually the roots of my husband, and it was an honor to come and discover it myself. I would also like to say something for the girls from the Girl to Leader campaign. Just remember, you guys are amazing. Never forget. And a special shout out for the girls of the, G2, the G20 girls. You rock. At age 25, you have done all this crazy stuff that I could only dream about. So you are lucky to be living in a time where girls can actually do anything they want. Just ignore the trolls on the way and the rope bumps that lie ahead and stay cool all the way to the real G20. And now for the serious bit. While Lithuania let women vote in 1918, it took Belgium all the way till 1948 to achieve that milestone. Since we have taken action and we have a gender parity on our election list, and that made us have 38% women in our parliament right now since 2014. However, work is never done. We still have a fallout. Women tend to stay less long in parliament, which leads to less female ministers in government. 
Right now, we have a whopping 22% of women in our government, so there are still ways to go. Thank you, uh, WPL, for giving us some tools, like Aegis gender-sensitive gender parliament tool. We will definitely introduce that back home so we can reach all the next milestones that lie ahead at a much faster pace. Thank you. Thank you. Bahrain. It is my pleasure to be here today. I am from Bahrain. Our leader, His Majesty King Hamad, have recognized the importance of advancing Bahraini women as an essential element of the political and economic development of the country. Hence, His Majesty have called for greater empowerment of women to enable them to play their vested role in serving and building the country and community on equal footing with their male partners. This emphasizes the fact that strong political is a significant driving force for women's development of our part of the world. In 2001, the Supreme Council of Women was established in Bahrain, chaired by Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika, wife of His Majesty the King with the aim to empower Bahraini women and men streaming their needs in development programs to ensure the sustainability of their families, stability, and familial bond to consolidate the principle of opportunities equity and providing diverse opportunities in order to enhance the stand, standard of their quality of life within a framework of legislation and supporting policies. Today, Bahraini women is highly ranked in the process of building the society more capable to hold the highest position in the kingdom. It suffices to see her today a minister, a judge, a businesswoman, and so on, yet preserving her natural role and primary task of nurturing the family and the nation at large. Thank you. Thank you. Angola. Excelências, minhas senhoras e meus senhores, eh, Angola agradece. Ladies and gentlemen, Angola thanks you very sincerely, especially the organizers, for this special conference. I'm grateful to all. Our parliament has 220 MPs and 63 of them are women. We have a women in peace group. And in Angola, the rights of women and children are protected by the Constitution. We have a social affairs ministry, a ministry of family and women's affairs. Therefore, these principles are crucial in theory, it works, but in practice, our country is still lagging behind. There are many t challenges, such as violence in family settings and access to education to all girls and women, as well as uh, fight against illiteracy because this is a real problem in Angola. Our parliament is in for many challenges indeed, including fiscal policy, and bridging the uh, uh, gender gap. We take part in a variety of forums to get more experience. This is why we came here. We fully understand that um, women's empowerment and gender equality 
are first and foremost reached when there is enough uh, engagement and women and girls are engaged in society. Je félicite le Forum des Femmes Leaders Politiques pour la réussite des travaux de ce sommet. I welcome all the ladies uh, in this forum, which was very successful. I thank all the organizers. We had an opportunity to celebrate independence, the centenary of independence of Lithuania. As for Algeria, which I represent, it has done a lot and advanced in implementing the international conventions in bridging the gap of genders. We are thankful to Abdelaziz Bouteflika, uh, the head of state of Algeria, for legislating the role of women in creating uh, well-being in our society, Algeria is now peaceful thanks to peace, uh, dialogue, and the culture of forgiveness, as well as mutual respect. We celebrate the National Peaceful Life Day. On that day, announced by the UN General Assembly in 1918, Continue that tradition. There are many theories in the world about civilizations and the conflict of civilizations. There are many people who speak in favor of exclusion and support extremism and various forms of violence. Those who don't acknowledge others, there are many cases of discrimination. Therefore, as political leaders, we have to do our utmost to support peace building and the culture of peace in our communities and among our nations. The more so since now there is uh, the context of uh, build up of uh, differences. I hope to meet you again in either Reykjavik or Tokyo. There is no Albania. Afghanistan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Afghan delegation of senators, I would like to join other participants in thanking um, Lithuania, the WPL team, for the opportunity to participate in this amazing summit and also for the warm hospitality. Afghanistan's commitment toward gender equality and women's empowerment is at the center of its development uh, plans. And uh, I'm honored to express my government's um, support to inclusion of women and the decision-making and economic empowerment of women. However, the struggle for gender equality, the empowerment of all Afghan women and girls in my country has a long way to go. Exasperating the challenges, the persistent insecurity, terrorist threats, violent extremism, among the other factors that affect the life, the life of citizens, including um, uh, life of women and girls. According to UNAMO report, um, about 298 deaths and 709 injuries occurred only in 2017. That's a 13% increase in the losses of women due to the warm armed conflict in Afghanistan. Despite this, Afghanistan is finalizing the CEDAW second, uh, third report, approving the SDGs, National Action Plan, and is publishing the NAP 1325 status report. 
uh, also for the advancement of women, Afghanistan is implementing Citizens' Charter and Women Economic Empowerment Priority Program. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Afghanistan um, has taken um, positive measures to advance uh, gender equality in Afghanistan. Afghan women play a vibrant role in, uh, we have 27.7% of seats taken in, in parliament taken by women. We have three ministers, five ambassadors, and many deputy ministers. But still, despite this, we need to uh, empower the women in rural areas. And uh, to improve the situation of women and girls, especially women in the rural area, we need to have the support of the government and the international community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and a few gentlemen, we have heard exactly 50 statements. Thank you for all them, for all of, uh, for them all. It is great honor to host you. Your warm wishes to our country make the climate better in our Seimas and in all Lithuania. I wish you your dreams and your wishes come through. Thank you very much. Good luck. Just a final note. Do you hear me? No. no. Okay. I just wanted to remind you all, dear ladies, that we have our farewell reception uh, at the National Library of Lithuania now at uh, 6.30. We're on time, which is great. And then I just also wanted to draw your attention to those that are still here tomorrow, that we have a guided excursion to the castle tomorrow at uh, 9 o'clock. Otherwise, thank you so much. Enjoy your evening. Thank you.